Bill Hajoy. I'm the founder of Precious Lives Ministry, an organization based in Narok and was founded in 2020. Precious Lives Ministries holistically works, works as a catalyst to community empowerment. And how do we do this? We do this by addressing both the seen and the unseen elements of period poverty. My story goes back, stems back to 2017 when I had uh, reached uh, my own version of rock bottom. And uh, I went around looking for opportunities, knocking doors for uh, internships. And just when I was almost uh, giving up, I got an internship with the current organization that I'm currently working with. And uh, from that uh, particular time, I didn't see the, it as a problem per se, because I was just a young youth who was looking for somewhere to attach herself. And uh, nowadays I realize that it stems back to access. Youths are uh, really looking for access. And uh, that's what motivated me to start my uh, initiative. So just giving people a platform, especially the young adolescent girls and young mothers to just uh, share their own problems to the world. Current, uh, currently, my beneficiaries are the students, both the high schoolers, the universities, and the primary school uh, pupils. We also have the uh, churches, we have the prisons, we have the orphanages, and uh, just the local organizations. I can say precious lives have impacted up to 5,000 people and how does the number come about? We've worked with uh, 13 schools that is uh, inclusive of the high school and the primary schools. We've also partnered with two uh, local organizations. We've partnered with four local churches and uh, we've also worked with one women's prison that is the Narok women's prison and we've also worked with two orphanages back in Narok. The main success story of Precious Lives is partnering with a local, local media house to do a documentary on Maasai culture that also uh, entailed just highlighting the challenges that the rural Maasai women undergo through during menstruation. And uh, that was a, a transformative part, if I can say, because it was eight hours drive from Narok and it happened in the extremely rural communities within Narok, somewhere that is not even like in the Google Maps for, for sure. And uh, we, we did that and I'm glad by it airing out the women could get now the sanitary towels, they could now get the help that they, they need. They, there was a borehole that was drilled and yeah, that one was really a big venture for us. One major challenge that we have as an, as an initiative is financial constraints because currently I can say we are not that established yet. We are just like, uh, we are, we are into, into three years of our community outreach work and majority of the trainings, majority of the mentorship, majority of the workshops that we do all require finances and uh, to even to visit these prisons, to visit these orphanages, to visit all these places require finances. So that is the main, main challenge we are having right now as an initiative. Our initiative has ad adapted to this uh, challenge through community partnership in that uh, before we do the trainings, before we do the workshops, before we, we do those mentorship uh, sessions, that we work with the communities and they are always willing to maybe provide one or two things uh, that are required during the trainings. Maybe they provide the workshop venue, they provide uh, the volunteers that will help during those trainings. And we've also uh, incorporated volunteerism as, a, as an uh, initiative because we've worked with students from the Masai Mara University who come up and just uh, help us within with the trainings. We've Personally, I'm also a facilitator, so when, when I'm called upon to facilitate different programs or different sessions, I use that money to, to scale up our, our initiative as well. 
some of, some of the strategies that we are using to impactfully uh, impact the community are co community collaborations. We also have workshops. We also have partnerships because we are uh, we have partnered with different. Uh, platforms such as the media, we have partnered with the government, we have partnered even with the local organizations within NAROC. Our organization aligns to the Inspire Inclusion theme by intentionally including the men and the boys in uh, the different menstrual hygiene trainings programs uh, within the communities that we work with. We also uh, include the men during the mentorship programs and that is how we are trying to just bring everyone along because after all period has transitioned from being a, an individual uh, issue to now a community thing and uh, that is why we really need to work even with the men.